Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today and we've got ourselves a decent amount of Xbox news to sift through on this fine Thursday. So I hope all of you are doing absolutely fantastic. Of course we have the 20th anniversary for Xbox quickly approaching, it'll be on November 15th and there's some stuff that's been announced to celebrate said anniversary. But is there more on the way? We're going to talk about that in today's video. On top of that, a potential Xbox exclusive could have leaked over on LinkedIn. We're going to do a little bit of investigative work because this company is seemingly connected to Bethesda, who's now part of Xbox. So we'll dive into that in today's video. Plus a little bit of PlayStation and their look into the future on how they're going to get their games out to more customers. It seems awfully familiar. I'll just say that much. But hey, maybe you're tired of Xbox news. You're like, Maddie, enough. Well, guess what? Over on Retro Rebound, where we upload every Monday and Thursday, we just posted a video on PS3 games and why I'm buying them now in 2021. The prices are going up. The time to buy is now. If you need some suggestions or you're interested in that market, go check out that video. Linked in the description down below. And don't do what I did with PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. Look at this sticker here, right? They decided to leave it on there. You're like, okay, I'll peel it off. There's a goddamn sticker beneath it. Are you kidding? Why do people do this? By the way, PlayStation, you doo-doo heads, make a sequel to this game. And Xbox, make your own Smash game while you're at it. Be like Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl, for God's sakes. We need more Smash games. All right, enough of that. Let's get into the news. First off was an announced brand new controller and headset for Xbox's 20th anniversary. November 15th will mark 20 years of gaming together. Fans help shape what Xbox is today, and we can't wait to see what the next 20 years will bring. Today, we celebrate our history with the 20th anniversary special edition Xbox wireless controller and 20th anniversary special edition Xbox stereo headset launching November 15th and available for pre-order now. We were inspired by our favorite memories together from the last 20 years and created not one, but two unique accessories to commemorate this milestone. We'll get into pricing in a sec, but all I gotta do is express a smidge of disappointment that this is not an officially licensed Xbox Series X Duke controller, okay? I may be a little biased because of my show name, Defining Duke. Yes, I will call myself on that immediately. Hyperkin did make one. I'm going to order one, but I'm a little, I'm just a little disappointed. You can get the 20th anniversary special edition Xbox controller for $70. Again, that's available November 15th this year. And the headset, which by the way, they announced this stereo headset a couple of months ago. This 20th anniversary edition though is available that same day for also $70, which Honestly, I've heard pretty good things about the stereo headset for Xbox, so if you're looking for a cheap investment, this isn't a bad place to go, and if you're looking to celebrate Xbox because it means a lot to you, then kill two birds with one stone. The other way that they're celebrating this is through sneakers. So they're teaming up with Adidas. Adidas has actually teamed up with a lot of brands for sneakers, for those who don't pay attention. Like, I own the Goku sneakers because they teamed up with Dragon Ball Z, and I love when Adidas does this. These Xbox ones are pretty fresh. I don't know if I will buy a pair personally, but uh, I know they're out there for someone. I liked what PlayStation did when I think it was the Air Force Ones. But anyway, you're not here to look at controllers. You're not here to look at sneakers. You're probably wondering, is this it? Will there be more? I think because of the timing of the announcements, right? We're in early October. We have another month until the anniversary. I feel like Xbox has had their finger on the pulse so precisely that there has to be more on the way. Now, we can only speculate, and my best guess, and my biggest hope, mind you, is that they finally add more games to back and pat. What better way to celebrate 20 years of Xbox, a history of many games, many great exclusives, than to say, hey, we've added more original Xbox games finally. We've added more 360 games. And if we wanna carry this a step further, we have this working theory over on Defining Duke, check out the show if you haven't, by the way, that they could do something like resolution boost for older games because they found out how to do FPS boost with Xbox One era games where now they're running at 60 FPS provided that this new programming trick they figured out works on it. And that takes some testing and they haven't announced anything for that in some time. So I anticipate like a batch of just backwards compatible announcements. And what would be really cool is if they said, Morrowind not only is getting an FPS boost, but now through our new resolution boost technique, you can play it in 4K, something like that. I know that's very idealistic, but I can't help but sit here and think that would be a true celebration of Xbox heritage, just bringing back the old games, adding new ones into the library and making them best playable on your system. Some have asked me, hey, what about a studio acquisition? I don't think they 
time things out like that. I believe that's more based off the financial quarters. I still believe we'll see something from Xbox this year. I just don't know if they're going to spend their day celebrating a purchase. It would be better to spread that wealth in my opinion, but we'll see. Anyway, for now, it's sneakers, controllers, headsets, and not the Duke controller, so that's fine. Let's move on. Let's talk about that exclusive that I was mentioning. This was discovered on a level designer at Behavior Interactive's LinkedIn profile. If you go there right now, you'll see that the level designer is working on an unannounced AAA project for about two years and three months at this point in time, which is for only PC and Xbox One. For those who don't know, Behavior Interactive is best known for Dead by Daylight, which is a pretty popular online game at this point in time. I have a couple of buddies who are really into this game. But beyond that, they've done a ton of support work. So I don't want to write this off as this is happening. This is an exclusive because again, they do support work. This could be anyone and they've just been contracted quietly to just do some hands-on work for the game. But two years of it, that's quite a bit. However, Maddie being Maddie, did some extra digging here and found something that I do think is a little theory worthy. So just bear with me for a second. They were not always known as Behavior Interactive. At one point, this company was referred to as Artificial Mind and Movement, and it wasn't until around 2010 that they changed their name to Behavior Interactive. So I was looking up games that Behavior Interactive had worked on, and there was a limited catalog. But then I found Artificial Mind and Movement and went back into their catalog and found out that they worked with Bethesda in 2009 on a game called Wet. If you have not played Wet, it's this almost DMC-inspired third-person shooter completely about style. And it came during an era where Bethesda, who's known for publishing decent titles now, right, with the likes of Wolfenstein, The Evil Within, anything from Arcane, they were not doing that back then. They were giving us really bad games. Shout out to Rogue Warrior. Never forget, I have a video about it on my channel. It's incredible how bad it is. But anyway, WET was developed by Artificial Mind and Movement, now known as Behavior Interactive. And now we have Bethesda, who's working directly with Xbox because they are owned by them. And you have Behavior Interactive, who may be working on a PC and Xbox game exclusively. And I'm like, okay, are the stars aligning here? Have we reignited an old partnership here? This is very Galaxy Brain. I understand, okay? I, I warned you at the beginning. But I think it's some good food for thought. There are some connections here that could exist. But with Dead by Daylight being as popular as it is, my money is more on if this is something that they're working on for Xbox. It is a multiplayer game that they can put on Game Pass. They can develop a relationship. I think that's Xbox's game plan right now. Uh, getting more multiplayer games, co-op games on Game Pass because that generates more users. So we'll see what happens with Behavior Interactive in due time. But for now, let's move on over to PlayStation. If you haven't already gone to the Retro Rebound video to check out some of that PlayStation content, once again, link down below. Let's talk about Jim Ryan, who had a very interesting quote in the interview. So take a listen and we'll discuss. Um, I'd also like to see a world where the games that we make uh, at PlayStation can be enjoyed by many many tens of millions of people, perhaps hundreds of millions of people. Because mm -hmm. um, right now, success uh, with the existing console model, a really great PlayStation hit. Um, you're talking 10 or 20 million yeah. um, people able to play that game. And if you, if you compare that, and we're, 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 you, you know, we're talking about games stacking up against music. We're talking about games stacking up against movies. Music and movies, uh, they can be enjoyed by almost limitless audiences. Um, and and I, I think some of the art that our studios are making is is some of the finest entertainment that's been made anywhere in the world. And to, to kind of gate the audience um, for the wonderful art, the wonderful entertainment these studios are making, to gate the audience for that at 20 or 30 million frustrates me. And I, I, I'd, love, um, I'd love to see a world where hundreds of millions of people can enjoy those games. I actually really like how Jim approached that. You know, for once in any interview I've seen of him, you could hear some of the fire and passion, the desire to get these games that he believes are cutting edge, some of the very best in all of entertainment, to more people. He doesn't really specify why, but as you've seen with a couple of announcements at the PlayStation Showcase with the likes of KOTOR Remake, say, where it's coming to PC as well, and they saw the announcement of Uncharted coming to PC, PlayStation is starting to loosen up slightly. 
they're not unaware at this point that being able to double dip is very profitable for them where they can do something like they did with days gone which is release the game it sells about 7 million copies then put it on PC and it sells another bunch of million copies whether you get people who double dip or you get people who are playing for the first time so I don't know if they're ever going to relinquish that tactic because right now it probably generates them a ton of money and there is a I put this in quotes quality standard with PlayStation games that's been established where people will happily continue to pay 60 to 70 dollars for any of their games kind of like Nintendo where it's just they know their fan base will pay the top dollar for it and in turn the company does consistently deliver a quality experience so there's really no argument on both sides but with game pass wedging its way in with accessibility through pricing ease of downloading and trying out games and ultimately saving you a lot of money plus getting the games into even more hands yeah playstation has to take a look at what they're doing i just found it interesting that jim ryan acknowledges this because it was a while ago that he had said they're going to do some type of competitor to Game Pass. We still don't know what that is, whether it's just PS Now adding games to be downloaded onto your console, or if they're actually going to announce a whole new service, or if it's the PS Plus collection and they're going to add to that, or it's the monthly PS Plus games. But with Game Pass being such a prominent thing right now, you'd think that this wouldn't be one of those times where they say something and do a different thing, or subvert your expectations in a way that you probably don't want it to be. So I do wonder how PlayStation is going to do this. Is it going to be continued PC releases? Will it just be day one PC releases, which would be a pretty significant change for them? Or would it be something along the lines of them doing their own Game Pass? I'm really excited to see them take a crack at that. Again, I think they're so interesting to watch. And a lot of people are in this comfortable cycle right now of, well, Xbox has Game Pass. PlayStation won't do that because they're doing their own thing. But that takes years to set up there's a big infrastructure that has to be laid out for that a lot of companies need to buy in it's obviously not easy to set up where now xbox has this working infrastructure and effectively it's a bunch of money deals so playstation has a lot of work ahead of them but i hope they end up doing a game pass competitor because i want to know what it's like when xbox gets the pressure put on them and they got to start reacting instead of just controlling the narrative controlling the conversation because right now they're in a very peculiar position where they're able to make announcements for game pass and it's the same level of excitement as if they just announced a third party exclusive because at the end of the day it's money saved it's more for that particular platform and that's a very effective tool that i think for marketability playstation is going to take note of just a couple more bits of news here one is about grounded so grounded's this obsidian passion project that i played for a little bit i enjoyed it and i never really touched afterwards it's currently available on xbox and pc in early access although even when it first came out it did not feel like an early access game at all and they've just added a new update and you may be wondering well maddie why are you talking about grounded it's because for those of you who are obsidian fans i think you'll find that some of the additions they made are very rpgified so let's talk about that in the new hot and hazy update where obsidian has added the following Ways to upgrade player stats. Obsidian is introducing Milk Molars, a brand new resource that can be invested in upgrading player and party stats in Grounded. Some of the stat boosts that can be obtained include personal upgrades like increasing max health and stamina, slower hunger and thirst, and additional mutation slots. Party upgrades like increased food stacks, resources, and ammo. There are also ways to upgrade weapons. Obsidian is introducing new globs, which can be used to increase the stats of weapons to new degrees. On top of already existing tier systems, features of upgrading weapons in grounded include a smithing station crafting table which is how players will combine globs with their weapons for boosted stats minty spicy and salty globs which upgrade weapons to fresh spicy and salty variants respectively then changes to armor and armor sets with Hot and Hazy's update, Grounded is receiving some important changes to how armor works, better organizing the increasing number of sets, and to make individual armor pieces more compelling for players. Some of these changes to armor include dividing armor into light, heavy, medium categories. I just thought this was cool because this game is good. It has a lot going for it, and this is an update that kind of screams my name a little bit more. Grounded's always been a game that I've kept my eye on, so I just want to go ahead and share that. Last bit of news, if you will, is something I just thought was kind of fascinating and shows that Game Pass can turn a lot of games around, which is good news and bad news, because a lot of people want more day one Game Pass deals where you get something like Scarlet Nexus day one instead of buying it, and then a couple months later you see it and go, ah, well, I could have saved some money there. And now we're seeing another game that was struggling it came into Game Pass later, and it sort of turned it around, giving itself a second lease on life. 
So Avengers was recently added to Game Pass on September 30th, and we can see right now in the stats that it sits behind some of the top Xbox Game Pass games, being Minecraft, Forza Horizon 4, FIFA 21, FIFA 21 on Xbox, and then Marvel Avengers is there at number five. I think this is great news to see because as much as I did not enjoy Avengers, I wanted them to be supported enough to fix the game because I adore Marvel. I love so many of the IP within Marvel. I would love to see this game get on its feet. And one of the biggest things holding it back was the player base. If you ever look up the Steam player count for this game, not looking hot. I've heard some good things about the fixes, patches, quality of life enhancements, and the expansions that they've added to this game. I think the damage is done for me personally, as someone who put about 30 to 40 hours into the game for a review. But for you, who maybe hasn't played it, keep an eye on some modern content for it, what people think about it, because maybe it is turning around and certainly a ton of people are playing it if it's a top five game in Game Pass. So congrats to Crystal Dynamics, who's now helping out with, of course, Perfect Dark. And we'll see what happens with Avengers afterwards. But still, something I thought was worth pointing out. That's all the news I have for you in today's video when it comes to Xbox. So let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. Of course, if you have yet to check out that link in the description below, head over to Retro Rebound. Let me know what you think of today's upload. I'd love to know your thoughts. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are also in the description down below. So many links. I know. I'm sorry. I'm becoming that guy. Stay sexy. Stay active. I love you all. Peace.